Representative Bainey, would you answer a question? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I will. Representative Ammerman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and Representative Bainey. In discussion in committee, was there anybody from the National Guard, did they speak uh, on anything with this bill? Representative Bainey. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Ammerman, I do not believe so, but someone may correct me if, if they did. Thank you, if I may continue, Mr. You, Speaker. You may continue. Well, Mr. Speaker, Member of Assembly, I really don't have any heartburn on this bill, but I'm, I'm not sure we're not putting our National Guard uh, members in, in, in a little bit of controversy, unless I'm reading the bill wrong, and that could very well be, but in a case of emergency where it's declared and the National Guard is brought out, which they probably will be, to help with, uh, say, diking and patrolling and stuff, and they have to abide by this, so if they see people with uh, legally carrying, I guess, according to this, legally carrying firearms, they basically won't be able to do anything. But maybe as they go on patrol, the ones they thought were legally, uh, were legally carrying them actually do something uh, that violates the law, they could be in trouble because not only are they under the auspice of uh, this bill, they also have to go by the Universal Code of Military Justice. So if something happens that they, they thought they were doing the right thing, but it goes haywire, they might be okay under this, but they might come back and there'll be an investigation. Well, who's on guard duty and, and what were you doing? Well, we thought we were doing right. Well, they might be able to get punished and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. I guess all I'm trying to say is I think this puts them in a, quite a quandary, so I'm gonna, I'm, I can support this. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the House has before it for final consideration, House Bill 1467, the clerk opening the key, and you may record your vote. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Key will be closed and the clerk will take the record. The final vote shows 76 yeas, 17 nay, one absent, not voting. House Bill 1467 is declared passed. <laughs> Continuing on 11th order business, the House has before it House Bill 1283, which has been read. Mr. Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, engrossed House Bill 1283, introduced by Representative Kay Koppelman and other House and Senate sponsors. Engrossed House Bill 1283 is a bill for an act to amend and reenact section 62.1-02-05 of the North Dakota Century Code relating to carrying a firearm with a concealed weapon permit and to declare an emergency. Mr. Speaker, your Judiciary Committee recommends amendments which are passed on the previous sixth order. When so amended and engrossed recommends to pass on engrossed House Bill 1283 by vote of 11 yeas, 2 nays, 1 absent, and 0 not voting. Mr. Speaker. Representative Larson. Mr. Speaker and members of the Assembly, your Judiciary Committee recommends a due pass on amended Bill 1283. This bill is enabling legislation to allow an individual who has a Class I concealed weapons permit to have their weapon in a church or place of worship with the prior approval of that church or place of worship and to declare an emergency. The original bill included both churches and schools but was amended to only include churches since schools are covered in another bill. We heard testimony from ch some church pastors that wanted the option to have one or more people in their congregation that could carry a concealed weapon so that their place of worship would be less vulnerable to someone who may enter their place of worship with the intent to kill people. The bill as amended also requires the place of worship to notify law enforcement about the fact that someone is in the church is armed and the identity of that person or people. We did hear from one individual that suggested that church people should just trust God and not guns, but the committee felt that it was a reasonable request to allow for some security within a church as long as the church leadership approved it in advance. Mr. Speaker, your Judiciary Committee recommends a due pass on House Bill 1283 and asks the Assembly to concert, c concur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the House has before it for final consideration, House Bill 1283. The clerk will open the key and you may record your vote.
Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? The key will be closed. The clerk will take the record. Final vote shows 82 yay, 11 nay, one absent not voting. The ho House Bill 1283 is declared passed and the emergency clause carried. Continuing on 11th order of business, House has before it House Bill 1215, which has been read. Mr. Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, engrossed House Bill 1215, introduced by Representative Kiefert and other House and Senate sponsors. Engrossed House Bill 1215 is a bill for an act to create and enact a new subsection to Section 15.1-19-10 of the North Dakota Century Code relating to school board policy to amend and reenact Section 62.1-02-05 of the North Dakota Century Code relating to carrying of a firearm with a concealed weapon permit. Mr. Speaker, your Judiciary Committee recommends amendments which are passed on the previous sixth order. When so amended and engrossed recommends do pass on engrossed House Bill 1215 by vote of eight yeas, five nays, one absent, and zero not voting. Mr. Speaker. Representative Brabant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker and members of the Assembly, your Judiciary Committee recommends do pass on House Bill 1215. House Bill 1215 enacts a new subsection and amends another in the North Dakota Century Code relating to the carrying of a firearm with a concealed weapons permit and also school board policy. Uh, section 1 creates uh, a new subsection and states that any final action relating to allowing a particular concealed weapons license holder to possess a firearm or dangerous weapon in a school may be held in executive session. Section uh, 2 amends a section and states that an individual who possesses a firearm at a public gathering is guilty of a Class B misdemeanor. This section defines public gathering, including athletic or, or, or sporting events, schools or school functions, churches or church functions, political rallies or functions, musical concerts, individuals in publicly owned parks uh, where hunting is not allowed by proclamation of publicly owned or operated, uh, operated buildings. The section does not allow, uh, does not apply to law enforcement officers, a uh, member of the armed forces or the, uh, of the United States or National Guard organized reserves, state defense forces or state uh, guard organizations when on duty, a competitor participating in an organized sports shooting event, a gun or antique show, a uh, participant using a blank cartridge firearm at a sporting or theatrical event, a firearm carried in a temporary residence or motor uh, vehicle, a student and an instructor at a hunter safety class, private uh, security personnel while on duty, a state uh, or federal park, <clears throat> um, an individual possessing a valid class one weapons license uh, from the state or who has reciprocity, authorizing the person to carry a firearm concealed if the individual is in school and has the approval to carry from the board of the school district in which the school is located and has informed local enforce law enforcement of the identity of the, of the carrier. Also a municipal court judge, a district court judge, a staff member of the Office of Attorney General and a retired North Dakota law enforcement officer. This section does not prevent any political subdivision from enacting an ordinance which has less uh, restrictive than this section for the possession of firearms at a public gathering. Mr. Speaker and members of the assembly, I urge your support for House Bill 1215. Is there any discussion? Representative Strindon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the bill carrier yield to a question? Representative Brabant, would you yield to a question? Mr. Speaker, I will. Representative Strindon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Brabant, under Section 1, it says any discussion of policy relating to allowing concealed weapons, dot, 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 may be held in executive session. Can you explain what the executive session would be? Um, would parents and teachers be involved in that? Um, who would be making the decision? Thank you. Representative Brabant. Well, it would be the officer of the school board, and it would be a, basically a, a, a closed session. Is there further, Thank discu you. further discussion? Representative Froseth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and members of the Assembly. I would encourage a no vote on House Bill 1215, uh, especially Section 1. If section 2 is, is important. That could be amended into the previous bill, House Bill 1283, on the Senate side. Local, local school board leaders, state teachers group, the state school board association, the state newspaper association all opposed 1215. 
The state doesn't need any more secret meetings, particularly on something as important as determining who can carry weapons in schools. Any school could easily debate the issue publicly and then designate their superintendent to determine who, if anyone, can carry a weapon in school. It is always inevitable that at any time you give the public body an opportunity to hold a secret meeting, it will take advantage of that meeting to discuss a lot of other issues as well as the purpose of the secret meeting. NDEA also testified against the bill as they feel it is not good precedent to allow a decision to be, made, to be made in executive session for a school board. The logic used to support the argument is baffling in that it is unlikely school shooters will research whether a school, school has someone in it with a concealed weapon. Making schools safer should be done at an open meeting with input from all groups. The Newspapers Association in response to House Bill 1215 is that, of all things you want the public to be involved with, it should be the decision to have guns in schools. I sincerely doubt a perpetrator would go through the minutes of a school board meeting and find out where the guns are. If you are an elected official and you do not want the public to know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Mr. Mr. Speaker and members of the assembly, I encourage a no vote on House Bill 1215. Thank you. Representative Kiefert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the assembly. I'd like to explain a little bit what this bill is about. And uh, some of our larger schools in North Dakota, they do have the option to hire a full-time police officer in their school. And the cost for them is like 75000 a year. If we were going to supply a police officer in every school in North Dakota, it would cost us $75 million a year just for the, private, or the public schools, not the private ones. Now, um, uh, what this bill does, it just allows the school board to, to develop their own plan of defense. It doesn't say they have to do anything, but it allows them to re hire a retired police officer, retired military, or if they have somebody on staff that's capable of taking the classes, it allows them to implement somebody on their own staff. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it <coughs> what it doesn't do is remove the gun safe zone. And the purpose of that is, is that we don't want to have parents on the school ground standing on the playground with guns thinking they're defending their school. So this would keep everything organized. And I'm kind of surprised that the biggest opposition to this bill was the privacy part of it. Now, if the school board decides not to protect their school, they would put in the paper that our school is not going to be defended. It'd be like putting a white flag up in there, attack us, we're not, and we're not defended. So that's what the reasoning was behind the privacy. And uh, local law enforcement would have the knowledge and be able to develop a plan with the local school their plan of defense. So that was the only reasoning behind the privacy part of this, is not to educate a perpetrator on which schools are armed, which ones aren't. The janitor's armed, he'll be there between the hours of three and five. They don't need to have that information. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Representative Delmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the assembly, there are big questions with liability for school districts and for school boards in this particular bill. Uh, there's no parental input. They can meet an executive session. They can decide they're going to hire somebody. They will inform law enforcement, uh, which is one of the, the benefits of this bill. But a lot of it is done without any input from parents. We did not have school board members or teachers or administrators asking us for this bill. As a matter of fact, most of them opposed it. I want you to think a couple of times before you go through and, and look at it. Um, I think we're giving people a sense of safety in schools that isn't going to be there with this bill. Uh, the executive session, I think a lot of people have questions. Ask yourself about the liability. I'd urge a no vote on this as well. Representative Kay Koppelman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and uh, members of the Assembly. Uh, just to comment on a couple of the things that have been brought up, some good debate on the floor. And uh, I, I very seldom get up uh, to correct my, my good friend and, and fellow former newspaper man, Representative Froseth. Uh, I was, he was a publisher. I was just a lowly editor, though, so I don't know if I dare do that or not. But uh, there are a couple issues on the bill that have been uh, talked about, and I think it's important for us to 
really understand what the bill says, what the committee did, and what the committee did not do. Uh, first of all, House Bill 1283, which we just passed, initially dealt with both churches and schools. So did House Bill 1215. What the committee decided to do was to amend House Bill 1283 to strictly be uh, dealing with churches to give the assembly an opportunity to vote up or down on that point. And we did something similar with House Bill 1215 by strictly having it deal with schools. The important question here on both these bills is whether we want, and in this case, since we're talking about this bill, whether we want schools to be gun-free zones or not. And there are different opinions on this. Some people around the country believe that the way to prevent guns in schools and the way to prevent shootings in schools is to make them gun-free zones, to say you can't carry guns there. Uh, obviously, a tragedy and uh, things we've been reading about in the news, not only in recent weeks, but in recent years, have proven that to be a fallacy. So the question becomes, if we are going to allow somebody to carry a gun in a school, who should it be? How should that decision be made? And uh, under what circumstances should it be made? Right now, in my community, there are guns in schools. Those guns are carried by police officers, or sometimes called resource officers. Some school districts, as has been mentioned, have the resources to do that. I think in our case, uh, I think the school pays for a portion of it, the city, the police pay for a portion of it. Not everyone has that luxury, certainly. In fact, I think there might even be schools in my district, my school district, that don't have that option because they lie outside of the city where this is permitted. The bill before you um, simply allows a school district to make the decision of someone with a concealed, appropriate concealed weapons permit to carry a gun in a school if they choose. Now, let's get to the meat of the bill. Two issues, really. One is, how's the decision made? And that's the point that Representative Froseth brought up. The committee looked carefully at this, and the, the intent of the sponsor is honorable. He wanted to ensure that there was some, uh, some privacy to the discussion of this, since it's such a sensitive topic, and uh, that, that not everything would be public. Now, I'm a big open records, open meetings guy, so I, I was concerned about that as well. Frankly, I think to preserve the sponsor's intent, we should have made this a confidential process if we wanted to go the direction he was advocating. That would mean the discussion was confidential, the decision was confidential, and the person who was allowed to carry a gun, if that decision were made, would be confidential. The committee didn't do that. We left the language that's in the bill in the bill. What it says is that the decision can be made in executive session. That does not mean it's confidential. It means the discussion on it is confidential, much like when I used to cover school board uh, negotiations years ago for the newspaper. And uh, when the board or the teachers would want to convene privately and talk about something, they'd go into executive session and they'd haggle it out. And we weren't privy to that conversation, but we were privy to the decision. Because executive de session does not mean you can hide what you decide. It simply means your discussion is private. Once you emerge from that executive session, you need to announce what the decision was. And we thought because there might be some confidential issues discussed in making the decision, it might be appropriate to have an executive session. This would not allow a school district to hide from the public the decision they make. That's the important thing to remember. So, Mr. Speaker, members of the Assembly, I would hope you'd, uh, you would agree, you'd honor the, the uh, committee's decision, you'd concur with the due pass recommendation. If people have concerns about the executive session, that can be further debated and the session's not over, but we thought it was a small step to allow some, uh, some private discussion before making a decision and that the decision would be made public. Representative Larson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In, in our committee, we had parents show up at, at the committee to talk about this bill. And they said, um, I, I specifically remember one father saying, I send my kids to school and it is the law. And I can't be there to protect my kids. Please allow me with my school board to allow to have somebody there that will be there to stand in the gap until law enforcement can arrive. I thought that was an important um, part of the testimony. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Rust. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With regard to the uh, executive session of a school board, I would remind you that all executive sessions are recorded and that they may be disclosed or sent to the Attorney General for review and uh, there have been times where that's happened because uh, individuals have thought that 
items were discussed in executive session that were not listed when they went into executive session and that they used it as a, a way to be able to talk about items that they should not have been talking about. And in some cases there have been some reprimands and some uh, to school boards that have done that. Uh, hasn't happened very often, but they have had to redo some things. But there is a process to protect the general public from going into executive session by having those things recorded. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Representative Ammerman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the assembly. Uh, I'll try to make this quick, but I gotta take kind of a long route to get to my point. In 1970, I volunteered for the draft in the Army and they uh, readily took me. And then all their wisdom, they looked at my fine physique and said, you should be in the infantry. So they put me in the infantry. It's important to know when you're in the infantry, you do one thing. That they have some sayings of what your mission is. But you train to kill. That's all you do. In the infantry, that's what you do. If called upon, you go train to kill. So for months and months, we trained all kinds of weapons under all kinds of conditions to do that. Well, after the training was done, they sent me to Vietnam to uh, apply my newfound trade. And when I was in Vietnam, I was engaged in several firefights. And to give you a little perspective was, we were walking in the jungle and you walk into an ambush. At the first sound of a rifle going off or a bullet crack, you're on the ground. You don't know how you got there, but you're on the ground in a heartbeat. What's most amazing, in that heartbeat going down, you've already emptied half the rounds in your weapon. We blew the tops of trees off trying to hit the ground. The chaos, the confusion, the yelling, the wounded, the shouting, and you're laying on the ground, you're shooting all over in that condensed piece of time. It, it's indescribable. And this is from men that were trained for months and months to do exactly what we were doing. So let's, let's go to a school situation. School board decides certain people can bring guns to school. And that's fine. So I'll, and I'll just call them Joe Average. They decide they're going to pack their concealed weapons to school. Things go fine. Then one day the unthinkable happens. Somebody comes to school, starts shooting the children, shooting up the place. Kids are screaming and yelling. Kids are dying. Bullets are going off. The chaos confusion, you can just imagine it. And then Joe Average, remember, he's got a gun. So he reaches in the pocket, brings out his gun, shoots his foot, shoots the blackboard, shoots the garbage can, three lights in the window. After he breaks the window, he's going to look down, and he's not going to remember even bringing that gun out. But then he gets his senses about him. He said, well, I got a gun. Maybe I should go look for the shooter. So he goes and looks for the shooter. And this is where the real courage, the real resolves to come in. When he points that gun at another human being, and he knows he's going to take his life when he pulls that trigger. No amount of training can do that. And I know the old adage that guns don't kill people, people kill people. That's true. But it's not just bad people with guns that kill people. It's good people with guns that have no idea what happens to the human psychic when the bullets start flying and the children start dying and the screams start happening. That's just unimaginable. And the adage, and I've heard the talk that, well, these shooters, if they know they got guns in school, they won't go there. That doesn't hold water. Not only are they going there to kill the children and shoot up the school, but they're going there to die. Most of them take their own lives. When they go there, they're going there to die. No matter, that's their mental state. So they're not going to worry if somebody's packing a gun. They're going to go there, and they know they're not walking out alive. 
as good intention as this bill is, it's not right. And I hope we can vote red. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Representative Kiefer, second time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the assembly. I wanted to clarify a couple points here too, uh, Representative Koppelman kind of related to them. But the uh, school district doesn't have to have anything in closed meetings. This only gives them the right. The second part of it is the reason these people go to these schools is because they know that there's nobody there to defend them. They go there to inflict injury and kill people. That's what they want to do. But most of the time, as soon as the siren sounds, as soon as somebody shows up, they end it. They end up shooting themselves. But what we're talking about here is we've got schools in North Dakota that have a response time of over half an hour for law enforcement to show up. So when you vote no, you're going to send a message that we're not going to protect you. You're going to be there defenseless for at least a half hour until police shows up. Even in Valley City, they figure the response time is probably 15 minutes before they start peeking on the doors to see what's going on. All we're saying is give the school board the right to defend themselves. Let somebody be there to protect our children. That's all we're saying. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the House has before it for final consideration, House Bill 1215. The clerk will open the key and you may record your vote. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? The key will be closed. The clerk will take the record. The final vote shows 60 yay, 90, or 33 nay, one absent and not voting. House Bill 1215 is declared passed. <laughs> Continuing on the 11th order of business, the House has before it House Bill 1366, which has been read. Mr. Chief Clerk. Mr. Speaker, engrossed House Bill 1366, introduced by Representative Becker and other House and Senate sponsors. Engrossed House Bill 1366 is a bill for an act to amend and reenact section 62.1-02-05 of the North Dakota Century Code, relating to carrying, a, a carrying of a firearm with a concealed weapons permit. Mr. Speaker, your Judiciary Committee recommends amendments which were passed on the previous sixth order. When so amended and engrossed recommends, do not pass on engrossed House Bill 1366 by a vote of seven yeas, six nays, one absent, and zero not voting. Mr. Speaker. Representative Kretschmar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Uh, House Bill 1366 had a close vote in the Judiciary Committee, but it had a 7-6 do not pass vote. And principally, I think, Mr. Speaker, because the provisions in this bill were kind of similar to those in the two bills we've just previously passed. So the committee felt, uh, the majority of the committee felt that we didn't need another bill in this area and so gave this bill a do not pass. We would hope that the House would uphold the committee decision. Is there any discussion? Representative Becker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there seems to be a fear of, of law-abiding citizens suddenly running amok if they're carrying their concealed weapons. And I think that's greatly exaggerated. Uh, I, I, I would contend that a gun-free zone, by its very definition, is a gun-for-criminals-only zone. And what we want to do is give the chance for law-abiding citizens to carry their concealed weapons to more closely align ourselves with the intent of the Second Amendment. Currently, at a public gathering, let's say a, a political rally, uh, the only people who might have weapons would be law enforcement, if they're there, and criminals. What this bill would do is simply make it so that we would have, in addition to those two categories, law-abiding citizens who have undergone uh, coursework, testing, fingerprinting, have gone to great lengths, clearly law-abiding with good intentions, be able to carry their weapons concealed to public gatherings. Under the current situation, if uh, a, some whack job were to come to a, a political rally, and I'll, I'll hearken back to Gabby Giffords, Essentially, if law enforcement's not there to stop the perpetrator immediately, we've got one reasonable option. Wait for that person to empty their clip, try and take them down when they're reloading. What this bill will allow is a trained, law-abiding citizen to do their best to stop this uh, criminal act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the House has before it for final consideration, House Bill 1366. The clerk will open the key and you may record your vote. 
Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Key will be closed. The clerk will take the record. The final vote shows 58 yay, 35 nay, one absent and not voting. House Bill 1366 is declared passed.